What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going through the best and worst tattoo TikToks I could find. So let's jump into it. Okay, I wanted to start off with this one because I, I got, let's start with it. So, okay, first off, obviously she's not wearing gloves, but I wanted to say, how nice are these tattoos actually? Like, okay, she's not wearing gloves. She's probably not like, she doesn't know how to be clean and sterile, whatever, whatever. But usually when I see someone who's tattooing like this, their tattoos are so awful that it, it is startling and this was startling in the fact that they are way better than I expected. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not losing my mind here. They're not perfect by any means. The outlines aren't perfect. The shading is a little rough, but I'm still surprised. Better than I was expecting. Someone who doesn't wear gloves, you'd expect them to be doing crappy tattoos. And this just isn't. There's a structure behind the tattoos. She's not afraid to put black in the tattoos. I'm, Better than most scratchers out here. So uh, good for her. On to the next. Fuck, it's dry as hell. Can you wet it, please? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Pretty funny. Okay, let's talk about this tattoo. It's funny that he got slapped in the face with some soapy crap. A lot of times when you're trying to get a photo, you have to dry wipe the tattoo. It's just part of the process. But that's obviously not what's interesting to me. What's interesting to me is the quality of the face tattoo. We all know what it's supposed to be, I think. It's some sort of initial. I guess we don't all know what it is. I don't know what the initial is or the old English is supposed to be, but we do know that there's lipstick mark behind the old English look thing. Look, not a great tattoo. You guys know, it's not. I'm actually kind of sad about it. And honestly, like usually, I mean, lip tattoos never look good anyways, but there's a way you do lip tattoos and you should just put red. Don't put a symbol around it and definitely don't slap a bunch of white into that symbol. This is just a tattoo that got away from the tatter and unfortunately, this is not the place you want to be fucking up a tattoo. On the side of the face, next to an eye, it's just a bummer ass tattoo. Still funny to watch him get slapped in the face. Fuck, it's dry as hell. Can you wet it, please? Oh. Yeah, bummer ass tattoo. On to the next. Okay, a lot of times people come in asking for all sorts of wild shit when it comes to tattoos, and I have to be like, Jesus, you're asking for a line down your entire back, just a single line, and I'm always like, oh God, why? And then I watched this girl freehand this stencil, and I was like, what the fuck? And then she does this very nice tattoo, look, very difficult to make a perfect line down the back. And I'm sure if you did it and showed it at different angles, probably not perfect. But the video, you're like, dude, Shakshi Panwar. You're, I mean, you crushed that. That is pretty much a perfect straight line down the back. Good on you. And for you to just stencil it with a pen, that's amazing. Good job. And I'm, I'm sure you guys that are at home like, Kirk, why are we watching just a line get made? Cause it's the hardest fucking thing to do in the whole world. Just trying to make a straight line on an imperfect body. Body, damn near impossible. She crushed it. Good for you, Shakshi Panwar. On to the next. This is day five of having these tattoos and I'm gonna show you guys what the heart is looking like. Um, I know it's healing. I know it is, but it looks so bad. It is definitely infected. This is how we are looking right now. Uh, I'm about to go put some more stuff on it. It is dry, um, but yeah, this is what we're dealing with. This is the healing process. That's really what I'm trying to show y'all. Just kind of like where it's at, day five of healing. Bro, 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 what happened here? Okay, I'm bummed. Let's talk about it. This is a tattoo that looks like it's half black and then half gray wash. So what that means is like they had a cap, they filled it halfway with ink, then they put water in it. So it's a wash of the true black. You got true black and a wash. Hopefully that makes sense. Probably doesn't, but hey, whatever. So. Half of it is supposed to be super black and the ha other half is supposed to be kind of black or more gray. Now, what happened here, this is my best, most educated guess because I've made mistakes like this and I've seen other tattooers make a lot of mistakes like this as well, is that whenever you're doing something that is like a solid gray wash, this means you don't put any black in the tattoo except for gray. A lot of times it's hard to see how saturated the image actually is because blood runs through it a lot easier. And this tattoo looks like 
they just hammered in the gray wash hoping that it's gonna get darker and darker and like actually saturate, but it never did. And instead he just bashed in this fucking tattoo and it's left this guy with not only beat up to shit skin, but he's damaged the skin so much it led to an infection. Now, a lot of times infections can happen from like poor hygiene or poor aftercare, but other times it's just from getting a tattoo beat the fuck into you. And that's what I'm gonna guess happened here. Like I said, putting in a wash of a gray into something that big, extremely difficult. It shouldn't have been attempted and it was a fuck up on this tatter's part, most likely. Other things could have happened, but that's what I'm gonna guess. Yeah, this is what we're dealing with. This is the healing process. That's really what I'm trying to show y'all, just kind of like where it's at, day five of healing. Oh my God. It's a real bummer when you get a tattoo infected. I have some like home remedies that I won't advise because like this is the internet. We're talking to a lot of people. I don't want you guys going home and doing dumb shit with tattoos that are partially infected. But what I will tell you is if you ever have a tattoo that's really infected and gnarly, don't hesitate to go to the doctor. Look, infected tattoos could lead to a lot of problems and be extremely painful. Solve the problem as fast as possible and go to a doctor. That also goes for allergic reactions of any kind when it comes to a tattoo. If you're reaching out to the tatter, they don't have the, the proper advice. Go to a doctor, not a tatter with these problems. On to the next one. Speaking of allergies and allergic reactions, let's talk about second skin. It says, example of second skin allergy on melanated skin. Okay, now I'm not a huge fan of Hot Scratcher. I think he gives advice that is lacking in a lot of ways, but I will say that I like how fucking honest he is with this particular thing. And he was being like, hey, this is something that happens. Okay, that tattoo, I can't ignore some of the, the line work. It's just hot trash, which I think is where he gets his name. But let's talk about the second skin. Okay, you're seeing these like straight lines. That is clearly a reaction to second skin. And I've been saying this since day one. I love second skin for the people that love second skin. Good for you. You don't have any reactions. Your skin's good, beautiful. But this tends to happen way fucking more often than is spoken about. And it drives me nuts that people continue to use this on like such a regular basis because I've seen People leave this shit on for multiple days when they're having reactions and they're left with like these right angle scars. Like they're just fucking giant scars the size of like, you know, this big. And it's just like blistered up and it's gross and it's red. And people, if you don't have a lot of tattoos or you've never healed a tattoo before, it's like, you don't know what to expect. And all of a sudden the bandage is having this crazy reaction and people are left being like, I don't know what's happening. And so they leave this shit on. Luckily, I think I read this caption. This was only after like three or four hours. But yeah, if you're a tatter, if you're getting this stuff applied on you, be careful. Even though you've done it before, it might not work the second time. And if you're a tatter, like I said, let your clients know. Look out for this. This is a big fucking issue. And it's just something you don't need happening on tattooing. That's why old fashioned saran wrap still works perfectly well for those who aren't sure about this stuff. On to the next. I wanted to take a moment to say thank you guys. We are well on our way to 50,000 subs. And if you guys don't mind liking and subscribing to the channel, the more people we get in our community, the less shitty tattoos are out in the world. So thank you so much. Okay, so it says you decided to black out your arm. Usually I'm not a huge fan of tatters tattooing themselves. I don't know why. I just am always like, hey dude, hey, you know, we have all this room. Like, why don't you get people that you really like and appreciate and you can learn how to tattoo from them by watching them and doing all this stuff. But hey, when it comes to blackouts, I'm like, there ain't fucking shit to learn except for how to do it. So go for it. Yeah, maybe the only time I've ever saw a tattooer tattooing themselves and I was like, yeah, not a big deal, whatever. But like I said, if you're a tattooer and you're tattooing yourself, I'm always like, why? I think you learn more by watching other people tattoo and especially people that you really look up to make sure you're doing your homework getting cool tattoos because that's also part of your responsibility as a tattooer on to the next there ain't nothing to learn here this is that one cedric dur dot dura dot i don't know how to pronounce it cedric red Dederick derod whatever tattoo just a funny goofy one dude i like it cry baby a little onion in the armpit bro on to the next okay this 
is just beautiful. There's nothing to it. Don't ruin this moment for me. Don't say some stupid shit in the comments saying how that tattoo painting looks stupid. No, don't. It's amazing. I love it. It's getting me excited. No, really. This is like one of the most beautiful paintings I've seen in a long time. I love how black it is and how red it is. Like, it's just like, bam, bam. What's really interesting to me is with Hanya's, they have black hair. So like everyone just paints in black. That's how you do it. That's what they're supposed to look like. And this dude didn't even like, he left no gray lines around the head. He just painted black to black and he left it and it looks right. And I don't know why it looks right because in my head, I'm like, don't do that, don't do that but clearly he knows something I don't. And he understands that maybe it doesn't fucking matter and like just paint all of it black and let the black touch. If you're having trouble following along, what I'm saying is like the top of the head, you can't tell where it starts or end because the black from the wind bars is touching the black from the hair. And that is really weird and very interesting. And I love it. Good on him. On to the next. Okay, so it says, how I tattoo fine lines, solid lines. I've never seen someone do this approach. And I think that it can work if you're very delicate and you're a smart tattooer. Um, but I also think that it could potentially lead to blowouts. But also, I think that the line will look thicker than what it was intended to be, almost inherently, like almost every single time now. Is that a big deal? Not at all. Clearly this tattooer knows how to work Teddy at X tattoo. What's interesting to me is that he's doing it at all. Like if you're just outlining something, that's a lot of work. And like I said, if it just ends up being a little bit thicker anyways, why don't you just grab a little bit thicker of a needle and do it that way? You know, like if the results are the same, why would you do this stressful back and forth and, and damage the skin that many times if you're just gonna make a three look like a five anyways? I don't know. I don't know. Hey, I'm not doing the tattoos. It's just what pops up into my head. And maybe he's like, oh no, that's not how it works for me. I don't fucking know. Clearly his tattoos are great or her. I don't know if a Teddy is a guy or a girl, but yeah, just my first initial thought, like clearly tattoos look great. Essentially at the end of it, you've gone this way, you've gone this way, and then you've gone back this way. That's three times over the same amount of skin. Seems like a lot of, a lot of work. I wouldn't do it. I would just go and be done with it. On to the next, you know, fucking party tats, dude. I believe he's sucking on Nas. He used to do that back in the day, so it was fun. It was a good time. I'm not mad about that. It's a little weird that this girl is getting her forearm tatted while he's doing it. Yeah. Party tats, dude. People be doing wild things. And then they post it on the internet and they don't expect to be like shit on a little bit by everybody. But what really drives me crazy is that bowl of food next to your tat station. I don't know why, but bro, Take your fucking plate to the sink, dude. Don't fucking leave your plate on a tat station. Of all the things to see here, that's the thing that drives me nuts. It's fucking gross. And really, not gross because of any other reason, just gross. If you look around and there's a plate next to where you're laying down currently, put that shit in the sink. Fucking grow up. <laughs> <laughs> on to the next, all you party peoples. I wasn't sure if I was looking at skin or attire. Yeah, this one's gnarly. It says, this is what epic healing looks like. <sighs> okay, fuck. There's a lot of things to talk about on this one. First off, I've seen scabbing tattoos kind of as bad as this heal up perfectly fine. Not very common that tattoos scar up this badly, but I have seen it done and tattoos like recover, no problem. So if you're sitting at home and you've had a, a rough heel on a tattoo, a lot of you guys know, tattoo comes back to life, not here. So what happened here was one, this is a tattoo on a darker person. When you're tattooing darker skin, you gotta be a little bit more cautious. A lot of times you'll get scarring a lot easier and you'll even get keloids. Now what happened here is that this darker person got these tattoos and they are too gnarly and too much detail and too small of a space. You really gotta leave open area, especially for this detailed of tattooing and especially with this thick of outlines. This arm is fucked. There ain't nothing that's gonna recover this arm. It's just overall fucked. And looking at it, it is 100% the tattooer's fault because looking at this, you shouldn't have done that much detail in this small of a space on a darker skinned person. I'm gonna match the thumbnail with my thumbnail. 
See that? That is so much detail. That is so much detail for this small of a space. And it drives me crazy that they went for it. But you know, hey, as a young tattooer, you gotta make mistakes. This is one of those big mistakes that you're gonna think about for the rest of your life if you don't quit from tattooing. That's why you get a mentor who helps you out along the way. Yeah, help you not make stupid mistakes like this that are career ending potentially. But fuck, that's an awful tattoo. And that poor guy who has to live with it. But yeah. No question that that rough heel is gonna look like that. On to the next. Okay, let's see this thing. Let's see this thing. What? Oh, yeah. Okay, a Basquiat tattoo leg sleeve thing. Okay, this is a good example of why tattoos are tattoos and why art is art and why when you try and mesh them together, it doesn't always fucking work out. Are the tattoos fundamentally bad? I don't know, I, I'd have to take a better look at it. It's hard to really tell like in this video, but the only thing that I will say, cause I don't know this tattooer, I don't know what their prerogative is or if this is like how they tattoo or if it was just a client who came in once. I'm gonna guess that this is kind of how they tattoo because they made this nice reel out of it, but leave the art to art. The only person who's in the same time period as Basquiat would be Keith Haring. Keith Haring paintings make great tattoos, as long as you do them big enough. Basquiat, on the other hand, doesn't. And I mean, like, this is a very clear example of art that should stay art. And tattoos are not the same thing. Dudes, you guys know, you guys know, by this point in this video, you guys know my opinion. Good tattooing is good tattooing, good art is good art. They're not necessarily the same thing, but obviously I think a good tattoo can be a great piece of art. It's just different mediums and there's nothing in the world that any commenter could ever say to change my mind on that. So on to the next. You know, there's a lot of people out here who are regretting their little dinky tats, dude. Like their little micro tats. Hey, I got good news for you. These tattoos are very easy to laser. They're dinky, they're small, they're delicate, they're ready to laser off. No big deal. Where if you're getting a big tratty panther, dude, those things are fucking laser proof. There's nothing you can do to get rid of a good, beautiful 14 round panther on your chest. That shit's staying there forever. But yeah, if you wanna get rid of those little dinky tats, even though I'm not a huge fan of laser, I don't think it's great for a lot of people. And I think people should just assume that all tattoos are permanent and they're gonna be extremely difficult to get off. But minus that, these little dinky ones are probably way easier to get rid of than others. So that was fun to watch. And on to the next, and by on to the next, I mean, I'll see you guys in a few days. I appreciate you. Have a good one.